Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online VGC 16 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. We're just going to jump into today's episode, still using the uh, Sceptile team that Hibiki gave to me. Go check them out if you don't already, or you haven't already, it's in its channels in the description below. Uh, said this in all the other, ep other episodes, but really good player, really good, uh, awesome rising VGC YouTuber who makes a lot of cool content and definitely gives some insight into the European and Japanese metagames. And he is qualified for day two of Worlds from Europe. So check him out. Like I said, YouTube channels in the description below. As always, if you enjoy Road to Rank, please share your support by leaving a like in the video. Would really appreciate it. Anyway, it's been a really, really fun, it was a three, four episodes with the team thus far. Uh, Honestly, one of the cooler teams I've used in the format, and it's nice because last time I used Tabiki's team in BGC 2015, it was a Mega Alakazam team. Some of you guys may remember that. Uh, that was also a lot of fun. So Ibiki, you know, has been able to build some really fun, kind of uh, innovative teams, and Sceptile's actually put in work. Like, it, when I was first looking at this team, I was like, oh, you know, Sceptile's probably just one of those niche picks that feels gimmicky and you can use for fun, but it actually does put on a lot of offensive pressure and uh, makes your opponent think twice in the team preview game because it's just so fast, it outspeeds, and you know, threatens three of the more uh, four common legendaries in Rayquaza, Kyogre, and Groudon, and uh, just fast grass knots and dragon pulses off is huge, and it's actually funny because we did see another Mega Sceptile in the last episode. I'm going to find a Korean opponent with a pretty low rating, 1456 for our first game, so don't want to lose this since the rating uh, would drop uh, considerably and uh, felt, felt like a VGC 2014 team at first with Kangaskhan, Talonflame, Aegislash, and Greninja on the bottom, but then Xerneas and Mewtwo. Uh, it's definitely scary team composition still. Hmm. I think I might just go Clef Kyogre as a lead. Don't need Zapdos too much here. Uh, Scizor's a big deal. Yeah, I think Kyogre, Clef, Scizor, Rayquaza makes the most sense here. I mean, Zapdos is good. Sceptile is utterly useless, I think, in this matchup. I mean, you bring Sceptile for the Primals and for potential Dragons. My opponent has none of that. And he's got priority with Talonflame. And Grass Knot and Dragon Pulse don't do jack to half my opponent's team. And he's got a Xerneas. Zapdos could be worth bringing. But I like the full offense here. So Rayquaza, Clef, uh, and then, or excuse me, Kyogre Clef as the lead. Rayquaza, Scizor. But not underestimating my opponent. I mean, it's still a strong team. Uh, Xerneas, Mewtwo, never really see that legendary combination before. But, like, you know, never want to underestimate your opponent, whether it's because of their rating or their team. So, I'm going to bring out Kyogre and Clef here. We are going to see... Don't recognize Korean names. Talonflame Greninja. Okay. Uh, I mean, I think I can just follow me. Water Spout. Which is exactly why. I mean, my opponent doesn't have any great resists to water. Okay. Other than Greninja, obviously. But Greninja is so frail. Water Spout probably does like 80%. So, I'm honestly just going to Water Spout follow me. Yeah, you mean... He could have... Uh, Gunk Shot on Greninja. You know, like, Physical Greninja was something we actually saw a little bit at the end of 2015 uh, to dunk those fairies, but even if he has that, that's fine. Map Block was the other move I thought he might have had here. Um, but that's fine, because now, you know, he doesn't even resist Water Spell. We'll probably see a Brave Bird, maybe a Tailwind. U-Turn, wow. That's really interesting. Uh, I mean, the only way I could have capitalized off this first turn was going for a Encore onto Greninja, but I'm okay with how this plays out. He's probably gonna bring in Xerneas though. Which does make it a little bit scarier. That what? No. Um although he could have wide guard now. Interesting. I'm gonna double protect here because I wanna bait out a potential wide guard. And scout out the Greninja's moveset. So we don't even see both legendaries, and I thought that would be a pretty opportune time to bring in Xerneas if you do have Gung Shot, but okay. Double Protect. There's a Wide Guard coming out, so he does have Wide Guard, which is actually troublesome since I don't have single target uh, grass, water type attack. He goes for the Grass Knot though, okay that's cool to see, because what I can do now, I'm going to Ice Beam into that slot, and follow me. Uh, maybe I should have Encored. Oh, nope, he wide guards. Good, 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 good. Uh, he could gunk shot here if he's carrying it. 
Um, we've seen Matt Block, we've seen Grass Knot. Nope, he's just gonna Grass Knot again. And we saw in the last episode, Club takes Grass Knot's like a champ. That literally did 21 damage. He's got Life Orb, now I Ice Beam to knock it out. So, uh, perfect first couple of turns. You know, just playing safely, scouting out my opponent's moveset, capitalizing off that. Don't want to walk into any potential... Uh, basically, I don't want to open myself to a position where my opponent can capitalize. Um, and that works out perfectly. I mean, uh, we are going to probably see the fourth Pokemon. It's going to be Mewtwo, not even Xerneas coming out here. Wow. It's got a nerve too, which is cool. Um, I'm just going to Water Spout. I mean, if you Wide Guard, that's fine. I'll scout for another turn. He must be feeling the pressure a little bit. It's going to be Mewtwo Y, okay. If I knock out Mewtwo, then... I mean, he still has Wide Guard support for the remainder of the game, I guess. But I've got Sash on... He just wide guard again, okay. Uh, let's see. Wide guard is a little bit in. Oh, he's got thunder! Wow! Didn't expect to see that. That is a ton of damage, actually. Huh. Interesting. Um. Well, if he's gonna thunder, then I'm gonna protect and. Encore. I mean, he could Thunderclef here, which hmm, we'll see. <laughs> Gonna continue spam wide guard, yeah. Thunder onto Kyogre. Encore, good. <laughs> Although I actually don't have a way to break wide guard at all, so I actually have to be careful here. Um, but I'm just gonna Ice Beam here and follow me. Yeah, he's gonna keep spamming Wide Guard. That's fine, because then I get a free search into Rayquaza. But it's still scary. I mean, because this team relies on Water Spot and Origin Pulse. Here's Thunder coming out. It's gonna take out Clef, fortunately. Clef did his job, though. I'm content. Yeah, if I had Scald, this game wouldn't even be remotely close. Ice Beam doesn't okay him out there. It's fine. Probably want to bring in Scizor here. Yeah. Mm, don't want to lose my Sash. He's locked into Thunder. Put Thunder Scizor. I could switch out into Rayquaza to make him more inaccurate. I'll switch out an array and bullet punch. Yeah, they're not. Oh, yeah, he actually switch out uh, Mewtwo, which is fine actually, I think. Because that extreme speed actually not, might just be able to knock out Talonflame by itself. But uh, <laughs> this is scary. Like, it shouldn't be this close. <laughs> the, the wide guard is what's really saving my opponent here. I wonder if he's going to finally go for an attack. No, he just keeps on wide guarding. Okay. So Bolo Punch to the Talon Flame probably does around like 40%. Nah, not as much, but that's fine. Um, so I'm actually just going to Mega Evolve, Extreme Speed, and Faint. Yeah. <sighs> the thing is, if you keep spamming Wide Guard, you can't attack with the Age of Slash, so... Like, I can just tar target down my opponent's partner Pokemon. Uh, it's Town Flame can't do very much here, I think. Yep, there's extreme speed coming out. Oh, yikes. I might actually not knock him out there. Oh, that was close. Okay, had a slight heart attack there. But no wide guard finally comes. Obviously, you don't need to wide guard. He does finally attack. Shadow Ball, probably. Yeah. Onto Rayquaza, okay. Did a lot actually. Uh, Mewtwo's gonna come back in, obviously. Don't think Bullet Punch knocks. I might have to double up. Hmm, this is still tricky. Do I want to double protect here?
Hmm. I think I'm gonna double up on. Oh, I could faint actually. Faint extreme speed. I don't know if that knocks him out, but. Hmm. Do I want to faint? Okay, I'm going for faint. Oh, he doesn't protect though. Okay, we're good. And actually, that could have been bad, um, because Faint and Extreme Speed have the same priority, so I actually, if he protected there, I think, yeah, Faint actually goes, Extreme Speed goes first, so I actually didn't consider that. That was bad on my end, so that actually was not a good play. Um, but he's going to Shadow Ball, knock out Rayquaza. So he did make the play to attack there with the uh, Aegislash. I think Bullet Punch would have knocked him out, but I didn't want to take that risk. Oops, sorry about that. But uh, yeah, now I can just bring in Kyogre, and I mean you can King Shield. Actually, I think Faint breaks that anyway, right? So I can just Water Spout here and Faint. I mean he can't he can't win here because you have to attack. If you spam Wide Guard, then actually no, Faint probably doesn't work because he's normal type. I mean it's normal. <laughs> yeah. But interesting enough, the King Shield drop doesn't happen there either. I mean, now you can... Yeah, I use... I'm just going to keep on bullet, punting, bullet punching for chip damage. And he's not going to wide guard here, so that's going to be game. That's more than chip damage, actually. A little bit more. That's like 15% of damage, which is pretty good. Uh, but single target water spot here picks up the knockout, closes it up. That was a scary finish. I mean, like, my opponent had one legendary and it was Mewtwo Y, and it still ended up being a game that was probably closer than most people would have anticipated there. But I just wanted to play safe. Uh, looked really good after I knocked out Greninja, but the wide guard was just really annoying. And then I realized, wow, I don't actually have an effective way to deal with Aegislash. So, uh, kind of cool to see, you know, those Pokemon there. We didn't see a Kangaskhan either, um, even though my opponent did have it. So. Kangaskhan Xerneas, probably the two most standard Pokemon that team not make an appearance, but eh, I'm not going to complain. So, just 20 points under the 1800s now, let's see if we can pick up another win. Uh, still really scary there, I should probably double check on the Bullet Punch ex or Faint Extreme Speed mechanics, but I do believe they have the same priority. So, since Rayquaza is faster, Faint actually goes after uh, Extreme Speed, which is bad. Um, but fortunate enough that it ended up working out, and... Uh, Ended up getting the chip damage there, but I don't know if he had Protect on Mewtwo or not. You would expect so, but uh, I mean, that was obviously a very interesting set. I mean, Mewtwo had Thunder, and my opponent didn't have Rain on his team either. <laughs> like, there was no Kyogre to support that Mewtwo, so uh, maybe just a counter to Kyogre teams. But it's going to end it for the first game, and let's just see what we can find for our second opponent there. Uh, definitely an interesting team composition and a scary game. I mean, those are the games where it's like, I feel like I should probably win this, but you don't want to under underestimate your opponent. You want to play to the best of your ability, and you know, always watch out for surprises. We did see a bunch of cool uh, moves on that, like, as we find Legacy from California. That's actually really fun. Uh, he's a really strong player who's qualified for Worlds, and uh, I think he has his own YouTube channel. He's making some VGC content as well, so I'll link it in the description below. Uh, it's going to be a fun matchup here. He's got Blastoise, Xerneas, Talonflame, Ferrothorn, Smeargle, and Rayquaza. So, obviously a bunch of interesting things to note. First of all, is the legendary duo of Rayquaza, Xerneas. Second of all, is that Blastoise, uh, which we really never see. Um, and that's frustrating because I want to bring Sceptile for Blastoise and Rayquaza, but otherwise Sceptile really sucks. Uh, Smeargle here is also a big deal. Uh, it's very intimidating to go up against. Uh, let's see. Definitely want Scizor. Anytime I see Xerneas, it's a uh, gotta bring Scizor. Uh, Scizor also helps out for super power against Ferrothorn. <sighs> but, you know, Clef's been so good in these matchups. The only reason I wouldn't bring Clef is because of Smeargle. Like, if my opponent didn't have Smeargle, I like, would absolutely bring Clef, but Smeargle makes me think twice. You know, I actually really like Zapdos Sizzler here. That threatens everything he could bring. And then I think I'm just going to go Rayogre. Yeah. No Clef, unfortunately. I think I need the offense here. But we'll see. This is definitely scary. Uh, the reason why I don't want to bring Clef is because... I mean... Clef helps out against Fire because Gyro Ball doesn't actually do that much damage, and I can redirect. Yeah, maybe I should have brought Clef over Zapdos, I think. But I wanted Zapdos because Zapdos is where I think threatens him uh, the most, you know, most combinations of things he could lead with here. 
Let's see. <laughs> there we go. I mean, that's Blastoise Xerneas coming out. That's uh, pretty much a perfect lead matchup, I would say. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to Thunderbolt here. Let's see. He's probably got Rayquaza in the back. Uh, really cool to see Blastoise here. The question is, do I want to predict Xerneas to switch out? Because I do anticipate a switching into Ferrothorn. But if I superpower it and I call it incorrectly, that would be bad. Eh, let's just bubble punch. He stays in. Oh, but he, he's got Fake Out on Blastoise. I forgot about that option. Oh, that's bad, that's bad, that's bad, that's bad. I should have Thunderbolted Xerneas to get the chip damage for Bullet Punch. Yeah, there's the Fake Out. Onto Scizor. Oog. Uh, if I just Thunderbolted Xerneas there, I would have been in such a good position. He does Geomancy. That's cool. Mmm. Yeah, I forgot about the fake out play. Should have Thunderbolt to Xerneas. Okay. Well, still not the end of the world. The tricky thing here is does he protect Xerneas or not? Uh oops. Could go for the Tailwind here. I'm gonna Bullet Punch Tailwind. Perfect. Regardless of what happens here, it's pretty good. Smeargle coming in. Oh, that's not good, actually. Probably a Protect from Xerneas then? Not even, okay. Yeah, that does a lot, but doesn't finish off the job. Yeah, uh, that Smeargle now can follow me, which is the main issue. It's gonna Moonblast. Zapdos, yep. Should have Thunderbolt in turn one. That was a bad misplay. Mm. Uh, gets an evasion increase. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, I'll bring out Rayquaza here. That evasion increase is actually like the one thing that I just did not want to see. Oh boy. I'm gonna double protect here. So I'm guessing he didn't bring, uh. He did not bring Ferrothorn, which is good. I should have considered the Smeargle possibility, though. So I'm gonna double protect. Scout off for what's miracle. I mean, that does open up to another moody boost, which is scary. Probably gonna be a follow me. Oh, interesting thing though. Extreme speed's priority is higher than follow me. Special attack. Okay, that's fine. Speed decrease. That's actually helpful. So I'm actually going. But he could protect now. And dark void. So do I want to double up on Smeargle? He could King Shield or Spiky Shield as well. I'm going to double up on Smeargle, I think. Oh, he doesn't protect with either. He did go for the uh, Dark Void play, which is a smart move. Oh! No, he just followed me. Okay. I mean, that's still fine if I hit this next extreme speed. It's an accuracy increase, that's fine. Evasion decrease, that, that's good. I don't think extreme speed knocks out Xerneas. We could have spiky shield here.
No, but if you spike, you should. Oh, you could double protect, yeah. Mm, I'm just an extreme speed ball punch. The thing is, if I knock out Smeargo, then Xerneas becomes basically useless since I outspeed and Blastoise is useless as well. He does protect with Xerneas. Does he protect with Smeargo as well? No. Okay. Come on! <sighs> That's game. <laughs> I just got Smeargled. That's so frustrating. Yeah. Nothing to say about that. <laughs> Defense increase. <laughs> There's nothing I can do. That's so frustrating. I think I could have won that if the Dark Void didn't double connect. Or, I mean, if he didn't get the evasion increases. But I can't complain. I mean, Moody's Moody. And I could have uh, played better against Xerneas turn 1. Um, I also don't know ex extreme speed knockdown Xerneas. I didn't think so though because Bullet Punch did like 70%. That was with Life Orb Stab uh, and Super Effectiveness. So good game to my opponent there. Check out uh, his YouTube channel. It's actually in the description below. He's played at Worlds before. Uh, super good player. Just a frustrating match because uh, I mean it came down to Smeargle being Smeargle, but that is why it's such a good Pokemon and why players need to play perfectly against it. Uh, just a little bit disheartening since I felt like it was a pretty good game otherwise, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. So good game to Alex there. Uh, fun episode and uh, a little bit disheartening to lose to Smeargle like that, but like I said, it is what it is and I could have played better. So it's going to be it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed. As always, leave a like if you did and I'll see you guys next time. Alright, peace.